Single mother Gabby returns to her hometown of New Orleans with her son Travis with the hopes of buying a fixer-upper and turning into a bed and breakfast. Unfortunately, the place they wind up selecting is completely riddled with ghosts, and there's absolutely no sawdust that will just get rid of that smell. Though the two flee the premises, it turns out the ghosts have just continued to haunt them no matter what, and they're eventually driven back, this time bringing along a priest, Father Kent, as well as an astrophysicist named Ben, who happens to have invented a special type of camera that seems to take pictures on the spectral scale. Or to put it simply, he can photograph ghosts. That being said, Ben is a complete and total skeptic ever since the death of his wife Alyssa, to the point that he's actually taken her old job of giving tours of various haunted places in New Orleans, strictly for the sole purposes of actually just debunking the hauntings. That all changes once Ben sets foot inside the mansion and realizes that these ghosts are all too real. In particular, there's a very malevolent spirit wielding a hat box that seems hell-bent on, well, unleashing hell on Earth. The group also enlists a paranormal studies professor named Bruce, as well as a medium named Harriet, to help find out the secrets of the Haunted Mansion. So yes, this is the second attempt, well, third if you count the failed uh, pitch by um, the Guillermo del Toro of uh, doing a movie based on the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland and Disney World. Uh, so yeah, um, very um, overall... Uh, a very unique movie. Uh, definitely does a good job of uh, blending humor and horror. There's a lot of uh, reasonable tension and jump scares built throughout. Uh, it's not completely overwrought. Uh, there's some very good utilization of the ghosts. Uh, obviously, Jamie Lee Curtis as Madame Leota, a medium in her own right who got trapped by this hatbox ghost who seems to be in charge of everything. Uh, yes, Jared Leto is the hatbox ghost and. Um, he's fine in this. I, I know Leto is a very polarizing figure, and, you know, he won that Academy Award a few years ago, and because he won that Academy Award, Hollywood just seems to think that that means he's hot shit, and, yeah, well, he's mostly the second part of that statement. Um, so, yeah, uh, but he is fine in this. I think he does a good job of it. I think they do a good job of building the story. Uh, the humor to an extent works, in particular, uh, Owen Wilson has some very scene stealing scenes as this priest with a kind of shady background that's not entirely know what it is he's doing as he doesn't seem to know much about the Bible and that does lead to a, a certain revelation later on. Uh, you know, he doesn't act very priestly, he just kind of acts very, um, you know, Owen Wilson-like. Uh, after that, uh, Lakeith Stanfield as Ben uh, has some good scenes in this. He has a really good, uh, very powerful story arc. There's a, a good arc in this about dealing with grief and dealing with loss and learning how to uh, let go without, you know, truly letting go and understanding that, you know, at some point you do have to move on from things. Uh, I think uh, there's some scene stealing scenes with the kid, with the child actor who plays. Uh, Gabby's son, Travis, he's uh, very good in this, too. Um, he has a unique story arc as well where, uh, you know, he's already kind of an isolated kid who's a social introvert, and, you know, these hauntings have actually traumatized him even further. And all of this leads up to, of course, the Hatbox Ghost and uh, his true meaning, uh, his true uh, motives, uh, the fact that, you know, through the generations, uh, people have been killed in this house, like, over the past, I think it was, like, thousand years. There have been, like, 999 deaths, and the next one that happens on the full moon will completely unleash the Hatbox hat Ghost on the Earth so that he can uh, just take over and uh, wreak havoc. And, yeah, so that's sort of the uh, serious angle. If I do have some problems with it, unfortunately, I'm, I think a lot of it has to kind of fall on the shoulders of Danny DeVito. Uh, like I said, I love Danny DeVito. He's very good. He has some moments in this, but it's very much just Danny DeVito jokes where, uh, you know, he's, you know, he's obviously a, a little person actor. Uh, but yeah, they play a lot off of that. Uh, there's a little bit uh, early on where he wants to come to the mansion, but they won't let him because they find out he has a heart condition 
and he's actually due for surgery in the next few weeks. And I'm like, wait, we, we can't bring you into this. This could be too intense. And uh, in a way, that does kind of come back a little bit. And uh, he eventually, like, just charges into the mansion. He actually gets thrown out the first time, but it's still enough to tie him in because uh, once you set foot in the mansion, you're tied to it, and the ghosts will haunt you. Uh, if I, I'd say the other problem is I think some of the ghosts are sort of neglected outside of uh, the Hatbox ghost, Madame Leota, like the bride, unfortunately, just doesn't really do much. Uh, if you're familiar with her story, like, you know, I think something like Muppets Haunted Mansion did a lot better job of balancing the ghosts in this, and this one was a bit more of the human story. And uh, you know, there's times where it's just like, you know, get, get back to the ghosts. I want to see the ghosts. That's what I'm here for. Um, so there's a little bit of that. I'd say Tiffany Haddish as the medium Harriet is very, very good in this. Uh, she is someone I've always been, um, you know, I, I've known she's talented, but sometimes it's like, you know, she always plays like the very loud, obnoxious character. And here I think she's uh, pleasantly restrained, and there are times where she really does show some heart. Like, you know, they doubt that she, you know, they just think she's like, a, you know, a phony psychic palm reader type, but then she's actually able to sense uh, Ben's grief and she's actually able to sense things about all the ghosts in the mansion and explain things and, uh, you know, help discern hidden places and uh, hold seances and she can actually, you know, even, uh, you know, get rid of the ghosts soon. She can fend the ghosts off fairly well as well. Uh, ben, like I said, uh, his arc is again about loss. But, you know, he is, his camera is actually pretty cool, too, where uh, it can photograph on the spectral plane and he can rig things up so that you can actually see the ghosts on camera every once in a while. You see them on surveillance footage where, you know, people are just in the room and, you know, a ghost is wandering through and flying through. Uh, they show them flying through empty rooms at times. Uh, you know, and when midnight hits, you're supposed to be in this one room. You're not supposed to leave because then the ghosts come after you. And there's, you know, good little bits in that. I do think they do a good job of delving into the little lore of the mansion. Uh, like I said, if, you know, unfortunately I think that's held back a little bit by some of the comedy just being kind of, you know, blasé, unfortunately. It just, not all of it hits in some ways. There's not really a lot of, like, uproarious laughter points in this. So, yeah, I would say, overall, I am going to give Disney's Haunted Mansion a B. Maybe a B minus, I think, actually. B minus. I don't know if I can drop all the way down to the C, but, you know, like I said, the fact that there's just not a lot of laughter in the film, I think, uh, was a bit of a detriment to it. Oh, help! Jasper! They took our sugar checks. <laughs> I'll get your sugar checks back. What the? Sugar checks sure taste great. Sure, they're sugar frosted. And there's a surprise prize inside. Look for me on Sugar Checks and get your surprise prize. Okay, trailer time, and well, we only had five trailers in this one, so uh, they're going to go by pretty quick. Uh, we had Wonka, The Meg 2 again, Blue Beetle again, TMNT Mutant Mayhem again, and Gran Turismo again. So, yeah, one new trailer for uh, repeats. Uh, obviously, Mutant Mayhem is the next movie, um, and probably the next video as well. I'm not entirely sure just yet. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know, I'm going to be doing a special thing with uh, Madden, given that that's coming out, well, next month still, we're still in July, technically, um, but yeah, uh, I do plan on, we're going to have like a little preview for that, because I have to go into some things, uh, it's not nothing too big, it's just, again, what's going to probably uh, deal with the schedule a little bit there, but it, it's not too important, I can deal with it in that video. 
But yeah, uh, at least I will say this: the next movie review is THP Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. Then uh, it's going to be the random trade review on Off Girl Genesis. Then uh, it's going to be SummerSlam, a WWE SummerSlam. And then after that, uh, it's going to be Blue Beetle. Uh, right now, like I said, I want to do AEW All In, which is the Wembley Stadium show, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it or not. Uh, money kind of tightened up. I don't know why I kept picking movies to come out week after week after week because that's, it's really not economically feasible for me to do that. I, I do need to start spacing things out again. Like uh, I plan on doing only one movie in September, uh, one theatrical movie. Like obviously streaming something, maybe that's different. But um, yeah, um, what I'm saying is hint, hint, Patreon, hint, hint. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, don't worry. Things will still come out. There'll still be plenty of videos for, available for everyone. See you all next time. Hey guys, remember you can request a movie or a television series for me to review at my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions. Also, remember to like the video, comment, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you can be alerted to further videos.